So today we're going to start our winter garden boxes and our chicken run for our chicken coop. So you can see to start we've got some, oh, they're about probably about eight foot by eight foot uh, boxes. These are done with some uh, recycled railroad ties. And since our property slopes downhill pretty good, um, we've just dug in to the hill, buried those so that they're level. My wife's gonna be helping me today. So we've got our boxes done uh, and we backfilled those with some black gold, uh, which is a mix of compost and topsoil. Got those all leveled out. Um, most of the ties are held together with some spikes. I left this one up just so you could see what we're putting in. Um, and I actually use the, the holes that are left in the ties from where the rails were attached. Um, so the first step that we're going to do is getting your boxes built, getting everything leveled and put together. Um, next we're going to start standing up panels for the chicken run. Um, we're not using anything fancy. These are a 16 foot hog panel. Um, I like the hog panel because the wires are a little bit closer together. Gives them a little more structure. Uh, they make a horse panel that's even closer than this. They just get really expensive. People with horses have too much money. So we're going with the hog panels, uh, which is a nice medium. Um, I think they're about $10 for a 16 foot panel. So this is a pretty low cost project. these ends. Dad, what's that thing? It's a grinder. I'm going to cut off these ends so that we can start with this nice flash, uh, flush panel and we'll scoot it down and we'll, that way we're not wasting this piece of panel. Hey guys, Micah, now that we're all done cutting, can you do me a favor? What? Can you pick up all the pieces that were cut off? Okay. I think they've all cooled down now. There's some over in the grass there. Pick up all those pieces because we don't want to run over them with the tractor. So all we're using to secure these 
cut panels to the T-posts are the ties that come with the package when you buy the T-posts. Here's um, more! And they just, you can use, uh, I wish it's got a pair of fencing pliers. Um, if any amount of property, you just got to own a pair. Um, I use them all the time. They just always stay in my back. Um, but they just twist basically around the T-post. And th this is what they're made for, is to secure panels. It's the same thing we use in the vineyard, um, tying the uh, cordon wires up to the posts. So we've got two panels at each end. And then this is a remaining the cutoff part of that panel, which will be our top. Once we get our first hoop up, we'll mark it where we need to cut it. All right, so we just stood up our first hooped section, which is just one full 16 foot panel looped over. Um, we're taking the the wires the, at the side of the panel that where they're closer together, it normally goes against the ground. We're using that on our outside edge, just for a little bit more structure, a little more support at the end of the hoop there. Um, and then as you can see, the panel over here, this is what is um, left over after we cut our two shorter panels for the end. The gap in the middle is gonna be our door. That's how we'll get in and out to clean. Um, when we do, if we do a hoop house, that how you that would be where your door would be to get in and out of it. Um, so what we're going to do now is start tying up these corners. Filming. Okay. So what we want to do now is tie up our corners, and what I'm using is just this uh, electric fencing wire. Um, I like Red Brand. I've tried a couple others and. This just seems to be a little more substantial. Um, the important thing is you use a galvanized wire. You don't want to use bailing wire or something cheap that's going to rust and break. So I start and I'm just going to loop it over to where I can grab both wires together. And then I'm just going to use a pair of pliers. And I'm going to twist them. Other tight. Wait, you unlaced it. You unlaced it. See? I can make it. By making a house. This is exactly the fire. This is how big the house is going to be. And we're done. We'll just clip off. think you're still not quite tight enough. One of the things I like about these fencing pliers is they've got this little point right out here on the end that you can grab with. So I'm going to grab that and give it one more twist just to tighten it up even more. And then with those poking out, I don't want them to catch on somebody, so I'm just going to hammer them down bottom of the panel. So we're going to do that and we're just going to work our way up probably probably at least as far as here. And I'm not going to cut any of these panels until we get the whole thing wired up and secure. Okay. So when you're done securing those, we've got four. I like to go every other. Beyond that, it's just kind of overkill. Um, but I've got these all twisted tight. You want the two wires to be as close to each other as you can get. And then I use my fencing pliers to just come back and clip them off. And then I can take that little piece and just hammer it down.
have enough room to get in there. I'm gonna use my other set of pliers. These are crimping pliers. So they've got a little notch down in there um, for the electric fencing wire if you need to crimp or couple uh, two wires together. Um, but out on the end here, they've got a cutting edge too. So since I don't have as much space over here, I'm gonna try to just cut them with these. which is why I don't like using them as much. All I'm going to do is mangle it. Really can't get to it. There we go. these are recyclable. So we'll pick them up, throw them in the recycling bin when we're done. So we're going to tie the two panels that we're using for our top together. So we've lined up where our cross pieces are and in order to hold it both left and right and up and down we're actually going to cross the ties on these. So I'm starting on the outside and I'm going to bend them in away from me like so make sure I can get that as tight as I possibly can and then I'm going to cross them in the back and bend them around to the front that way I grab them with my pliers and twist. I've created an X at that joint. It's going to keep everything aligned and tight. So we've gone ahead and we've gotten our middles tied up all the way across. We went every other. So we have two full panels going across. And we put two more T-posts up the back. And the leftover panel that we cut from the front is the piece that goes on the back. So, so far in this design, we have two panels going across the top and one panel cut in half for the front and the back. Now we still need to finish off the panel at the top here, but that's only about a half a panel tall and the back will only be about half a panel tall. So what we plan to do is cut one piece for the door, it will be a full height piece for the door, get that as tall as we can. And then the remaining piece will cut in half lengthwise, and that will fill in our top portions of the front panel and the back panel. Now, for our girls, we may run another band up about this high with the tighter chicken wire. Not so much to keep them in as to keep other things out, you can see we're kind of surrounded by trees and forest up here. So we do have the occasional fox and coyote that wanders in. So hopefully this gives them a place they can run, spend some more time during the day, a little more protection than free ranging. So we've got our top panel on now. And what I've done is I've gone along as the top panel curves down and found the points 
where they cross and secured those with ties. Now I've started, I got my angle grinder out here with a cutting wheel on it, and I've started going through and trimming off the excess panels here. And I'm trying, wherever possible, to leave, Let's see if I can show that. It's not wanting to focus up close for me. I'm trying to leave straight cuts because um, I don't want anything to to poke or catch. On some of these I've got a slight angle. I'm going to come back here and clean that up so that I don't have a point on that. Um, if you were going to use this method to do a hoop house, I would put all the ties on the inside. That way they don't snag your plastic when you pull it off uh, or pull it across. Because we're using this for birds, I wanted all the ties on the outside so I could cut them easily and bend them down and not have to worry about um, anything pokey on the inside that might injure them. So that's where we're at. I'm going to continue cutting across and trimming off all the excess from this panel. So here we are all finished up, uh, trimming off our excess panels. So you can see we've got a nice curve to our little chicken run now. So um, when we cut the top and the bottom panels, uh, we actually started by cutting off the door on that panel. So this is our door piece here. I'm gonna stand that up. So you can see we, when we laid this out, when we measured it, I actually wanted the door to be just slightly larger. So we've got a little bit of an overlap there and on this side. So we'll put some wire loops around this end to act as hinges and then we'll put a little catch or uh, hook on this end so that we can hook it shut. So we finished up our little uh, chicken run hoop house. Um, I'll just show the little detail. We've got our our coop up here, um, and I had intended on building a run at some time. I just didn't know when. So we left this panel on the bottom of the coop um, with just a, a piece of plywood in it. So I popped that off, and then we built this little connection that kind of runs between our chicken run over here and, and the coop. Um, we did go ahead and get some uh, closer spaced um, fencing on the lower part here. I don't like actual chicken wire just because it's so hard to work with and flimsy. So this is actually I think rabbit fencing. Um, it just has the closer squares and you know by the time our chicks are ready to go outside uh, they can't really get through it and nothing that I'm worried about getting in here and getting after them can go between it anyway so um, but I wanted to show a couple details on this um, one is our door so we got the door on and as I said earlier you want your door to be a little bit wider than your spacing here you can see for a hinge, we're just using our, a regular loop of wire. Um, it's nothing too complicated. I do want to show though, you want to make sure that you're putting these at the bottom of uh, a space there so it has room to move. And I'll show you why. Um, I've got just a wire to hold this right now, but you can see down at the bottom, um, this actually won't pull out. Um, the way we did this door was so that you lift up on it. If you can get it loose here. There we go. So you lift up on it in order to get it to open. Um, so when you're ready to close it up, Close it and then it shifts down to lock it 
in place so it doesn't go anywhere. And I need to get a better clasp on this for right now. We're just using a little piece of wire um, to hold that to hold that back on there. Push that back so it's good and secure. Um, overall, I'm pretty happy with the way this came out. Um, I think total price for the four panels uh, was like 10 or $12 a piece. So we're looking at maybe 50 bucks for the panels. And I think the roll of the rabbit fencing and the small roll of the uh, thinner gauge um, uh, electric fencing wire was around maybe $50. I think the, the roll of the fencing was 25 and I think the 25 or 30 and I think the small roll of the galvanized wire was like 10. Uh, so for less than $100 um, with both the T-posts, the panel, the fencing, everything all inclusive, um, we've got a, a fully fenced enclosed on the top because we do have some hawks. Uh, I got a family of red-tailed hawks that live up in the trees uh, up beyond our property here. So this gives our chickens about 100 square feet that they can run during the day and with three birds in there, that's more than enough space. Um, in the winter time, we'll be able to throw a tarp over this if we wanna give them some wind protection or uh, block snow or, or anything else. Um, so we'll give them a little more space than just the coop um, during the winter time. I also wanted to show some details on the coop. I've had some people ask questions on that. Uh, we built this two years ago. Um, it's made out of mostly scrap lumber. Um, the posts on the corner we bought, um, that was just some pressure treated four by four posts. Um, up on top here, we got a little herb garden and that's mainly just um, to get something up and out of the way so that the chickens can't eat it. And then if you look inside of our coop, I think Rita's actually trying to lay right now. Um, we've got just a little feeder and then a couple nesting boxes up top. Um, I actually found that on a, a website. Uh, it works really, really well. I just pop those out and we can clean the coop very easily. Um, I put a door on it so we can get access and not pick up eggs. As you can see, we've had some neighbor dogs that have come over here and tried to bust in and it has survived that. Um, nothing special on the roof, just uh, corrugated galvanized sheeting. We got a little air space up there. Um, and then all the siding is uh, recycled pallets. On the end of the coop, um, we've got a door that pops down underneath. Um, so this is actually, let's see if we can show it, it's actually hinged on the bottom so we can pull our uh, our wheelbarrow up underneath here and I lift those nesting boxes out of the inside and we can just scoop all of the wood chips from the inside right down through the hole in the floor and clean out the whole coop pretty pretty quickly and easily. It is on skids so we can pull it in and out and make changes if we want to um, or if we need to clean it. I've got a chain on this end that just hooks to the back of my tractor and we'll pull it right out. The uh, a little ladder going up there it actually folds so we can fold it back down and out of the way uh, if we want to move it so it's pretty basic and simple um, I do have one project I'd like to do before this winter's over and that is uh, to get some uh, some heat in there some passive heat in there and I think I'm gonna try to do a uh, solar heater that circulates just warmer air in and out of the coop. So watch for a follow-up video on that. That's a chicken run for under a hundred bucks.